Hello, Phyllis Moore here, philosophically speaking, and I am looking entirely too happy in contrast to what I'm going to talk about today, which is bitterness. <laughs> bitterness. I know, not something we want to talk about, right? We don't want to be bitter. We don't want to have bitterness. We don't want to, to experience it, um, but definitely we don't want to be a bitter pill. That's what my mom would probably say, you know, well, aren't you a bitter pill? I'm sorry, she doesn't talk like that, <laughs> but, um, you know, you don't. You know, I remember in the Bible, there we would hear these Sunday school lessons, and it would talk about where Jesus said, you know, you don't want to be lukewarm. You know, if you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. And I always thought about lukewarm water. You know, it's one thing to have cold water on a really hot summer day, and how wonderful that is. It quenches your thirst, it's really, really great. And hot water, like if you want a nice cup of hot tea or coffee in the colder climates to just start your day or to, to kind of warm you up uh, because you've been out in, in the cold or whatever, that's very refreshing in that sense. But lukewarm is kind of like, you know, that's just, you know, and, and it really spoke to me because I thought that's just kind of yucky. And so Jesus in that passage was basically saying, you know, you know, if you're good, if you're going to do anything, you know, certainly if you're going to be faithful to God or if you're going to do anything well, yeah, you need to be hot or cold, no in between, no neutral, wimpy, whiny, whatever. But bitterness is another one of those. And the only way I can think of as an example, and you might have your own, if you've ever had pecans, Okay, I'm from the South. Pecans, pecans. Anyway, it's like pecan pie. That's just the way <laughs> you have to say it. But if you have ever had a pecan and you have um, cracked that nut and, and tried to take the meat out of it, which is the good tasting part of the nut, and sometimes, you know, you might get a little other piece of the shell in there. It's awful. It is awful. It ruins the whole ambiance and taste of that and the point of that, which is a good tasting nut. Now, you know, you know, you might like different nuts, whatever. Pecans are probably my favorite. Uh, they just, they just always have been. I, I like other ones as well. We're not, we're not going there today. That's not the point of this. But if you've ever had something and it might be that, it might be another, another food where you've tasted something bitter and it's just kind of jarring and upsetting and it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, literally, pun intended. And you know, you know, that's not something you want. So to go with that and say, you know, we don't want to be bitter people, right? Um, you know, there's a, a passage of scripture I'm gonna kind of reference here. It's Ephesians 4, 31 and 32. Maybe you've heard this, but Paul was talking to the church of Ephesus, I guess, in Ephesians. Um, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Well, that's a huge amount of truth, right? But bitterness, not that it mattered to, you know, to lead off with that, but bitterness, yeah, put that aside. And you think about that as I have because I tend to be pretty pleasant, pretty approachable. I, I strive to be anyway. I think I'm pretty easygoing, but I have definite opinions. And you know, the only difference between an opinion and a judgment is whose vantage point. I've come to see that because when other people say things about us, we can easily readily say, don't judge me, or I don't want people to judge me. And yet, if you flip that around and we say or think or feel about another person, we don't think that's judging. Oh no, that's just my opinion. That's just my thought. That's just my feelings. But you know what? Think of that. Think about that a little bit and stuff because it really is on the vantage point of whose side or whose version it is. So with that being said, we can look at other people and think they are bitter or you know, they get to be a certain age and they're just cranky. And yet we can be guilty of that too. So just food for thought, just something that I have been thinking about. Um, but I was thinking about 
this topic because something I just read and it just brought it to mind because I don't think of myself as bitter. And yet, let me just use myself as an example. You know, so, you know, if you have similar things or if you can relate or if this will just be something to plant the seed to have you be aware of as, as I'm trying to be more aware and more mindful. And it's kind of like cleaning out some of the clutter, if you will, emotionally, spiritually, maybe physically too, but um, certainly in our own lives and who we are. And I went through a marriage. I'll just use me as the example and my scenario. Went through a marriage and there was a lot of negativity. My pastor who counseled me at the time said he was a rageaholic. Not my pastor, but the person I was with. And he said, you know, it's kind of like an alcoholic, except there's not necessarily a substance involved, but sometimes there's just a rage and an anger and a bitterness, let's just toss that word again, where it comes out in their behaviors. And so I experienced a lot of things and I internalized them and I didn't know what to do with them because I didn't really retaliate. I wasn't an angry, bitter person. Um, there's two ways that anger can come out. One is externally, which is how you would talk to somebody, how you would treat them, how you, you know, might yell and rage and, you know, whether it's down the road with your car or in general, how you speak to people or how you treat them, bottom line. The opposite side of that coin is to internalize that and it's kind of like you implode and that comes out in forms of anxiety, depression, and just holding it in. So, you know, I'm sure you, perhaps like me, never thought of anger turned inward as being depression or sadness because it's like that doesn't seem like anger, but if we hold on to it and we don't have a healthy outlet for it, yeah, it can, can really, it's like, you know, stress inside. I have done that. I have had that issue for a long time. When I came out of that marriage, my mom said to me, and this was lovely because she is this wonderful, godly woman which who has a very, very nice demeanor and was always very kind to people. And she probably got it. She probably understood because maybe she had done something to this as well. But I remember her saying, you are so forgiving. And you know, that was high praise indeed because I didn't feel like I had been forgiving, but I learned a lot about forgiveness, which doesn't mean you let people off the hook. Doesn't mean that it's okay how they treated you. In, in, in essence, what it means is you have not, you know, you're not going to hold on to it. You're not going to give them power to continue hurting you, especially if you've walked away from the situation. Don't keep carrying it on. So I felt like, okay, I have forgiven. I have let go of that rope. I have moved on because there is a saying, I might have shared it here before, but you can either be bitter or better. And I chose to be better. I didn't want to be bitter. I didn't want to be angry. I didn't want to go the rest of my life, you know, treating other people poorly. I wanted to walk away and say, you know what? I am free. I don't have to hold on to this anymore. I don't have to have this, you know, allow this to have any power over me or any control. I can be a happy person. I can be kind to the person. And I thought I was doing really well. I truly did. I thought I was doing very well with being a happy person and a pleasant person and a kind person and, and really not holding on to it until I met my now husband. And he was wonderful. He was very easygoing. He was very kind. He was not bitter. He was not an angry person. And he had come out of a marriage as well and probably was parallel to what I had experienced. So he probably could have been bitter and angry as well. But I thought, no, no, neither of us are. We're good people. We're kind people. We're lovely people. But what I discovered, and I'm just reflecting on this now because at the time I was aware but not totally conscious of it, there were a lot of moments when I had anger. And I didn't equate it to before. I didn't equate it or blame and say, oh, well, this is just residual from what I'd experienced. But what I am now realizing is that I complained a lot. And I'm not necessarily saying about him, but I would sometimes have 
like passive aggressive, like I would, you know, I would say things that were not very polite, not very positive, because I would complain. And complaining is not a good thing. So it's maybe a subtle form of bitterness. I'm just, I'm just thinking. And there were things like at the end of the day, you know, I would tell him about my day and so-and-so said this and so-and-so. And I look at that now and go, oh my gosh, that probably had more to do with me than it did all these other horrible people. That perhaps my anger was coming out through a tiny, tiny opening and I didn't realize that I was bitter, that I was still angry, that my hurt was coming out. And and why did I do that? Why did I keep being angry and complaining and feel like I needed to do that? That instead of talking about the positives of my day or instead of focusing on things that were good or the glass was half full or being more joyous like I had set out to do, suddenly I was in this relationship with this wonderful person and it was safe and I could say it, but I wasn't looking at it as me holding on to some of the, the other stuff. I have had other occasions where people have said or done things that affected me, hurt my feelings, bothered me. I didn't have a voice for that. I didn't know how to come back. I didn't know how to do it in a healthy way. Um, so I would take it and I probably resented it. My point of all of this is, is leading up to the fact that there have been times in my life that I have, I guess, reiterated things. Oh, they did this and they did this. And I keep re, you know, re, I, I don't even know what word I'm looking for. Um, I keep saying it again and again, repeating it maybe. I keep rehashing it. I keep bringing it up. And most times people don't want to hear that because they don't know what to do with that. And all it does is make you look bad. But at any rate, I have thought often of why I keep having to bring this up. Why do I have to keep talking about they hurt me and they did this and they did that like I'm like I'm just slamming them. And it's not because I want to be bitter. It's not because I want to be in anger or anguish about other people. But I was reading something today that hit it right on the head. That just hit it right on the head. And that is that sometimes it would be wonderful if we're truly gonna forgive, if we're truly gonna pack away this bitterness and say, that's not who I wanna be, that's not how I want to be, that we keep holding on to it. And I know part of this, but this just kind of kicked it into high gear because I have often thought, you know, maybe I'm holding on to it because then whether it's a former partner who mistreated us or an abusive relationship or a bad situation at work or in a neighborhood or a family or what have you. If people have done things and we were felt wronged and we didn't speak up or we didn't know how to deal with it and so we hold on to it and we keep picking at that wound, picking at it, picking at it, picking at it and rehashing it, whether we're thinking about it or it's playing in the background of our mind or we keep bringing it up and thinking about it, talking about it, what have you. And if those bitter roots take hold and it changes the quality of our life, yeah, that's something to address. But what occurred to me was as long as I keep rehashing it in some form or fashion, it's like legitimizing it. So if I do that, then I won't sit there and say, oh my gosh, I won't glamorize the person and say, oh, they were so nice, you know, now they're a saint because I'm forgetting. But you know what, it's a good thing to forget because sometimes we need to forgive and forget and let it be in the past and say, you know what, it is no longer gonna chain me down and have a strong hold on my life and affect who I am and how I am. But what I was reading today was saying, sometimes we can't let go of it because if we hold on to whatever, past hurts, regrets, wounds, whatever's happened in our life, if we do that, then that is like evidence that it happened and we are right. And, and I don't mean right in the sense that, you know, we, you know, get, you know, we win. We don't win. What do we win if we keep holding on to it and all of these things that have happened before, they've moved on and they 
they don't know they've been forgiven, so they probably don't care or don't think about it. But what I read today said, you know, for us to hold on to these things, these wrongs, these bad things, these, you know, words that have hurt us or whatever, to not let them go is for some sense of, you know, I, I'm, I get to be right. I get to say, yeah, that happened. Well, who's asking? Who's asking? Nobody's really coming up. But for us to do that, to, to make sure we tighten our fist around it and, and let our hearts not be open to other good things that could happen because we still want to dwell there, is like, let's, let's look at it like a, a lawyer who is holding on to a file. Because if you throw that file out, he might not win his case. Well, what are we going to win? What do we win by holding on to all of these so that if somebody were to come up, we can say, you know, I'm still not over that. I still, I can't get over that. I can't believe that happened. I can't believe it. Think about being right, but it goes right back into that thought that I mentioned earlier, which is do you want to be bitter or do you want to be better? And if we have that cho that choice, we come to the fork in the road, choose better, choose better all the time. So I challenge you, I challenge me to work on letting go of that file. You know, let God have that one. Let him have that one and he gets to decide where the price needs to be paid. But we don't need to be holding on to that bitterness. We do not need to keep rehashing it and reliving it and picking at that wound and picking at that scab and not letting it heal. So I'm working really, really hard on trying to travel light and not be bitter and to be better every day to be better. So, you know, whatever it is, whatever that is for you, I hope that you will let bitterness and anger and, and unforgiveness and resentment and all of those things, file them away, toss them away. We, we need to do that because life is definitely too short and I don't want to be bitter. I don't want people to see me as bitter and I want to be mindful if I am moving in that direction and I have a tendency to be bitter. So working on that, hopefully you are traveling as light as possible and know that you are loved. Those who really know you best realize what a great loving, kind person you are, and we are not holding on to anything else other than those thoughts. Enjoy your day. God bless. Bye.